is the ability to have namespace events. But what, what this doesn't help with the isolation of jQuery. This helps with isolation of plugins. Because what, what's happening right now is that a plugin will come and it will attach a click handler to an element of the page. Another plugin will come and also attach a click handler to the same element on the page. And the problem is that the plugins didn't have any way to determine which handler was theirs, which one to remove, and it was, it was messy. They had to remember all the functions they mapped, and it, they had to do the garbage collection, and it is, it, is, it is a mess. So what happens now is that when you bind an event, for example, we're binding a click, you can add a dot name to it. And that name, theoretically, would probably be the name of your plugin. Um, so you have dot plugin name. And so that later on, when you go to clean it up, you can just call it dot unbind dot your plugin name. And that way, so it's, it's a quick one call, and you can clean up all, everything that you've got on the page simultaneously. So it's, it's really quite uh, efficient. Uh, special events. This was uh, one of the items here I added recently. Uh, uh, Brandon Aaron tackled this. And this was a, a way to simulate uh, proper events that are happening. So in this case, uh, mouse enter, mouse leave. We wanted a way to simulate that uh, actually occurring. I just want to show you the source of this really quick. Um, all right, so yeah, so here's uh, Mouse Center, and it has uh, three uh, three all events that you register out uh, of three steps: uh, setting up, uh, uh, removing again later, and then handling the actual event call. So the, in this case, the uh, uh, for when a mouse enter is called, so uh, Internet Explorer actually has a mouse enter and mouse leave. So when Internet Explorer comes in, it's like, hey, forget it, we'll just let Internet Explorer handle. Um, but for all the other browsers, we go in and we actually buy a mouse over event, and because uh, that's the one that we uh, that we actually want to be listening to, and so that when we when we handle it here. Uh, we, we, do our, you know, we do our magic to make sure that, in this case, the difference between mouse enter and mouse leave uh, from um, mouse over and mouse out is that uh, if you bind it to, because mouse over and mouse out, if you move inside an element and there's child elements inside, you'll get the event many, uh, many times. Whereas mouse enter and mouse leave, you just get it once. It's, it's a better equivalent of like hovering. You know, just enter once, and leave once. That's it. Uh, it's, honestly, it's the way it should have been. Internet Explorer gets a lot of things right. They, they get a lot wrong, but they get a lot wrong. So yeah, so, uh, this is, is, again, a series of events. And if you look, open up uh, the hover plugin, or uh, sorry, the hover method, that's exactly what it's doing. It's just bottom of the mouse, mouse center and mouse the, uh, function. It's uh, not more uh, complicated than that. How long do you be changing that uh, to do uh, uh, feature recognition with the 1.3 to see it? So, so that, 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 is, uh, that is the trickiest area. Uh, actually, I, I think that's, you know, let me see this on the next slide. Um, oh, we, we can go. I'll just talk about it now instead. All right, so as much before, all, all browser, or, sorry, all JavaScript bloggers right now do browser sniffing. They look at the user agent that comes in and try and use that information to make guesses about what should happen next. And there's a lot of places where we can remove this. Um, and uh, we can make it more resilient to future changes by the browser. I just want to show you some of the code I'm working on here. So this is a little, uh, I call it support. Uh, so uh, this is just my mock-up right now. So uh, there would be a new object called jQuery.support. And it, it, it has a whole bunch of properties that list out what the browser supports. Um, Specifically, there's a whole bunch of things that we care about. Uh, for example here, uh, what, what we're doing is so we create a div and we inject this whole bunch of HTML. <coughs> each, each, each piece of this HTML has a different quirk that we care about. So for example, Internet Explorer, uh, when you inject an HTML string and it has a leading white space, it chops the leading white space off. So that's the quirk that we want to know about because we want to fix it later. So right now, our code would say, you know, if jQuery, browser, MSID, 
doing this stuff to fix it. Whereas now we can say J, you know, jQuery that support we need white space. You know, does it does not strip out the white space, and then we can handle that. Yep. And this is not super slow somehow. No, it's this. Um, <laughs> so what happens is we do a single injection, and then we do our checks. In this case, there's about maybe a dozen checks there. So, um, and then yeah, we do a second <coughs> check here for a separate set of things. But no, it, it's, it's about 200 HTMLs. And nothing's actually and nothing's actually injected into the page. Um, yeah, it, it's 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 pretty good actually. Um, so I assume you can't do anything that has to do with the way things actually look, right? Like let's right. say like so, sorry has some display bugs that you'd be able to. So 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 some of the things that, <coughs> that you can't sniff for are things like um, you know if you set the if you set the color to red, we can't actually know if the browser actually made it red. You know, we're just kind of taking it in good faith that the browser's going to do what we say and we'll over time it to um, So, I mean, there's, there's only an extent to where we can go. One area where we're going to have problems, and we have to really think about this, is again in the mouse enter. Uh, so, also, so, see here, so we say if an explorer uh, was let an explorer handle it. The problem is, is that right now, uh, browsers don't provide a way to know if they will support an event. At some point, which is frustrating, uh, because because you can go to an element and say, hey, will you ever fire? You know, you want to say, will you ever fire a mouse and turn And you just want to say yes or no. But right now, there's no way to determine that. Same way with um, you also see this with like the onload event. If you if a JavaScript is loaded late into a page, there's no way to ask the page, hey, are you already loaded or not? It, it's, it's it's pretty frustrating. Um, in this case, what, we, what we'll probably end up doing in order to avoid the sniffing is uh, just use the mouse over code in all browsers. It, it, so Internet Explorer is it, going to be slightly more inefficient, but our code paths will be much simpler. So uh, it, it, it's a trade-off. I mean, in, in some cases, we, will, we, we might see a slight performance degradation, but we think that the benefit of having sustainable code going forward is worth it. Uh, especially if we're able to make performance improvements in other ways, you know, in the selector engine and you know, uh, you know using document effect and stuff like that. Have you seen Scott's test user device? Yep. Okay. Yep. Scott and I have chatted a lot. Okay. <laughs> uh, Scott has done uh, sim uh, similar work. He uh, he was using it on some of his client pages to determine large scale features, both about CSS and JavaScript. You know, you you did some cool stuff. You know, do do floats work the way you expect? Or you know, the double margin bug is you know stuff like that. Uh, you know, it's uh, it, his code's really quite Check it out. Um, Let's again. Test user device. Scott in here. If you go to a list of art, it's the latest code article. There Nothing. Uh, so jQuery, uh, we now have uh, animation plugins. Uh, this is something that's uh, also pretty new. And it allows you to write whole new styles of uh, animation, tapping into our uh, animation engine. So in this case, let's say we wanted to find a new animation that was called order. In this case, it animated two properties simultaneously. And we can do this. It it's, it's, ends up being uh, pretty straightforward to code, actually pretty simple. So I only have a couple minutes left, so I'll put you on a run through here. I just I want to uh, pimp our test suite here really quick. Uh, Yorn's done some excellent work. Uh, I don't, uh, I think I just can check. So I want to show an example. So this is some of the, an example of the code that you could write uh, using the, the test suite. We would call it test suite QUnit. And uh, you, you can write tests as well. We would like the syntax to be nice and simple. Um, so you have basic test, there's, uh, you see a method, there's okay, there's equals. Uh, we have a couple other methods, but those are the primary ones that you most likely be interacting with. And the output, it, it, it gives you a nice little output. You can click in it, you can click one of these to expand it to see the, the results from each test. You can double click it to run one test individually at a time. So it, it's nice, we use this for jQuery and we have how many tests are we up to now? I want to say over 1,200 or so for, for jQuery itself.